This is a tutorial on how to do sensitivity analysis in Excel using data tables. For this tutorial, we will be using real-world data from the renewable energy company, Nextera. The purpose of this analysis is to determine how operating revenue and various operating expenses affect the net operating income or net operating profit after taxes. So as our inputs, we have net or we have operating revenue. We have various operating expenses, including operations and maintenance, fuel and power, and depreciation. Income before taxes is calculated as the difference between the revenue and the sum of the expenses. Income after taxes is calculated as the income before taxes minus the calculated income tax. To determine how each of these inputs affects NOPAT, we will set up individual data tables. These data tables will then be converted into a sensitivity table, and finally we will visualize our data in a tornado chart. So to start with, we'll set up a data table for revenue. For each data table, we'll have three conditions. A condition in which, or our base case, a condition in which our revenue or expense goes down, and a condition in which our revenue expense goes up. So we'll start with our base case, and then we'll adjust each of our conditions accordingly. Next step in the data table is to tell Excel what is the output. So in this case, we will reference back to the original operating income after tax cell. Now we can see that this is a formula that references the income tax and the operating income, tax, income before taxes. So now to finish the data table, we'll highlight our area, go to the data tab, what if analysis, and select data table. Since our different revenues are in a column, we'll choose column input cell, and then reference back to the original operating revenue in our operating income formula. Hit enter, and you can see that the data table is now populated with different notepads based on our different revenue estimates. If we then change one of our conditions, let's say instead of 5%, we have 10%, our data table updates accordingly. As a sanity check, we look at our base case, or 0% change, and make sure that the notepad here matches the income after taxes in our original financial statement. So now I'll set up data tables for each of the remaining three variables, in this case, the three operating expenses. So the first thing to do is to put in the base cases. And then I'll simply copy over the formulas from our first data table. Next, we'll reference back to our output cell. And finally, we'll finish off each data table. So again, what if analysis, data table. Our operations and maintenance are in a column, so we'll select column input cell, reference back to the original cell in the formula, and hit enter. Do the same for fuel. and the same for depreciation. And now you can see we have four data tables, each with their own values for how the notepad is affected by changing each variable. So the next step is to consolidate these into a single sensitivity table. So first we'll list our categories. And then we'll simply refer back to each data table. I can highlight these and drag down. And now we've reproduced our four data tables in a consolidated sensitivity table. The next step is to create an adjusted sensitivity table, which simply means instead of having raw values, we're going to look at the net change for each variable. So to do that, I refer back to the sensitivity table, 
but in this case I'm going to subtract out the base case for each variable. Fill right, and then fill down. Next I want to see what the overall change is. So to do that, I'll take the absolute value of the difference between the two conditions. And finally, I want to rank each of these so I know which has the greatest effect and which has the least effect on Notepad. So to do this, we'll use rank, select the number we want to rank, and then the array, which in this case is the range. Now I'll fill the right. And now we can see revenue has the largest impact and depreciation has the smallest impact. To make this a little bit easier to visualize, I want to create a graph. But in order to do that, I want to reorder my data such that they go from the largest effect to the smallest effect. I could do this by hand, but we're going to set up a dynamic table so that any time we change one of our inputs, our table and our graph update as well. To do this, we're going to use two functions, index and match. The index function works by returning the value of a particular cell in an array. So in this case, let's say I want to know what the third category is in my category array. First, I'll highlight the array, and then I'll say I want to know number three. So my third category is fuel. I change that to four, I get depreciation. The match function works by returning the cell number that matches a particular input in an array. So let's say I want to know which is my, which variable has the largest effect on notepad. I'll say I want to match one to my rank array, and I want to know exactly which cell, or I want an exact match. So this tells me that the number one occurs first in my rank array. If I want to know where the third largest effect on notepad occurs, I'll change the one to a three. And this tells me that the number three occurs second in my rank array. So these two functions are useful, but they're even more effective when combined. So to do this, I'm going to use index, refer back to my category array. So let's say I want to know which category has the largest effect on Notepad. So I'll refer to the category array, and then I'll say match one to my rank array. So this tells me now that revenue has the largest effect. If I want to know which has the smallest effect, I can change the one to a four, and now I see that depreciation has the smallest effect. So we'll use this nested function to create a dynamic table. First we reference our array, and now we're going to match in our rank array. I'll simply drag this to the right and update which value I'm looking for. And now I can take these and drag them down, change the formatting to be dollars. And now I have a dynamic table. So if, for instance, my fuel costs, instead of going up 5%, go up 50%, you can see originally the fuel was second. Now the table updates and the fuel is first.
So the final step is to create a visualization. So we'll highlight our dynamic table, go to Insert, 2D Bar, and we'll select Clustered Bar. We'll call it a tornado chart. Get rid of the legend. Now the interface in 2013 is slightly different than the interface in Excel 2010, but the variables or the values that get changed are the same. So we'll right click on the axis and say format axis. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to have our variable with the largest effect at the top and the one with the smallest effect at the bottom. So we'll go to axis options, and say categories in reverse order. Next we want to move the labels for our categories to the left. So we'll go to labels and say label position will be low. Next we want to have our bars overlap rather than be offset. So we'll click on the series. Go to Series Options and set Series Overlap to 100%. We want the bars to be a little bigger. We'll reduce the gap between them, say 75%. And finally, we'll change the color. And one last step, we'll add axis titles so that we know what we're looking at. And now, since our chart is linked to our table and our table is dynamic, if we change some of our inputs, our chart updates as well. Now this is important because a true sensitivity analysis generally does not have the same range for each variable that's being changed. By setting up this dynamic table and chart, we can then adjust our input variables accordingly. And that is how you set up a sensitivity analysis in Excel.